So here's the OnePlus 8T, and really, this phone is not a complicated proposition. Basically, take the OnePlus 8, flatten it out and improve the display a whole bunch, bump up the battery and add crazy fast charging. Okay, so there's more to the OnePlus 8T than just that, but those are the broad strokes. And so, for a phone based on solid foundations with some fantastic upgrades, it's no surprise the 8T is yet another great mid-tier flagship from this company. Take a sec to subscribe to Android Central here on YouTube and we'll get stuck in. So with a 6.5 inch screen, the OnePlus 8T is about the same physical size as the 8. It's at that sweet spot where you get a nice amount of screen real estate, but it's also not too difficult for one-handed use. And the light weight also helps out a lot with ergonomics. Let's get right down to the main attraction of the 8T though, which is immediately obvious when you power on the phone. That's the new 120Hz display. This is only Full HD Plus resolution, unlike the OnePlus 8 Pro, but it's a fantastic screen nonetheless. The peak brightness of 1100 nits makes it easy to use in bright daylight, and the colours are incredibly punchy, almost to a fault, although you can switch down to a more natural colour profile if you like. Plus, it almost goes without saying, this is a OnePlus phone with a 120Hz screen, so the 8T absolutely flies. It feels as fast or faster than any other phone I've used. That experience is helped along by the 240Hz touch response rate, great haptic feedback, UFS 3.1 storage, and of course a Snapdragon 865 under the hood. My review device has the top 256 gigs of storage plus 12 gigs of RAM loadout. There's also an 8 plus 128 version that'll sell for less in some countries. Like the 8 and 8 Pro, you've got a hole punch selfie camera up in the top corner there. But unlike those phones, we're back to a flat style panel that's simpler and less prone to accidental touches than a curved display. So this is a fantastic screen, and even though the resolution isn't the highest, I think you'll struggle to find a better overall display at this price point. In-screen fingerprint and face unlock are back too, and both work great on the 8T. You still can't use face unlock for mobile payments and other secure apps though. The fit and finish of this phone is pretty sharp too. I'm usually a fan of matte glass on phones like this, and the Luna Silver 8T does come with this kind of frosted finish. But my aquamarine green 8T's glossy rear looks pretty classy, and OnePlus has made use of diffuse reflection on its back panel to reduce the appearance of fingerprints, which is pretty impressive. In fact, this is probably the least fingerprinty glossy phone I've ever used. The situation with water resistance is a bit complicated though. The global model I have here has no IP rating, but the T-Mobile US version is rated IP68, even though there's no functional difference between the way the two of them are made. So you can draw your own conclusions there, but for the unlocked 8T that I've been using, I've splashed it with water, I've used it out in the rain, and it's been perfectly fine. Meanwhile on the back, the camera module has shifted over the top left corner, which OnePlus says is to help fit in more stuff inside the phone, including the new and larger vapor chamber cooling system, which helps with overall performance, but also with a new 65 watt warp charge feature. With a 4500mAh battery, OnePlus boasts a full day in just 15 minutes of charge, so basically around twice as fast as the old warp charge 30T. I've timed it, and I went from dead to 50% in 15 minutes, then up to full in 39 minutes, which just happens to exactly match OnePlus's quoted numbers. The charging brick now supports PPS too, meaning you can use it to charge other supporting devices like laptops at up to 45 watts, and because of the way this new Warp Charge 65 works, you can now use it with any USB-C to C cable, provided OnePlus's charging brick is on the other end, which is pretty great, no need to worry about using proprietary cables anymore. As for battery life, I've been getting around the same out of the OnePlus 8T as I did from the OnePlus 8. The battery is slightly bigger, but you've also got a higher refresh rate screen to contend with, so the two pretty much balance each other out there. In any case, that means a pretty easy full day of use for me without any battery anxiety, topping out around 5 hours of screen on time. For what it's worth, the Full HD Plus panel seems a little bit less power hungry than the QHD 120Hz screen of the OnePlus 8 Pro, which would certainly make sense since you are pushing fewer pixels. So, if you're a OnePlus veteran, probably the most significant thing you'll notice in the 8T will be Oxygen OS 11. The new software, based on Android 11, looks radically different, perhaps representing the biggest visual overhaul in OnePlus's software history. The OnePlus font is front and centre, and the default accent colours are red and black, very on brand, and the built-in apps have been retooled to allow for easier one-handed use. It's easy to draw comparisons with Samsung's One UI and point out how Samsung got here first, or how OnePlus is the copycat, I get that to a certain extent, but the feel of this UI is overall pretty different once you get past those superficial similarities. On my device, I've changed one or two visual things like the accent colour to blue, and in fact, I really don't mind the way this looks and feels overall. 
If you are a stock Android purist, then maybe you'll find things you dislike compared to older versions, but if you are that kind of Android fan, then at least you still have key Google integration like photos on your lock screen while charging, the Google feed on your home screen, and Google's phone and messages apps preloaded as standard, just like the OnePlus Nord. And OnePlus now finally has an always-on display feature. There are a few designs to choose from, including Insight, which shows you your unlock count and a visual representation of how often you've unlocked your phone throughout the day. And the Canvas AOD, which will be added in a future software version, will give you an outline of your wallpaper photo on the always-on display. Gimmicks aside, the smoothness and polish that we loved about Oxygen OS hasn't gone anywhere in this new version. You still get the fastest performance and the latest version of Android. And as with any big visual changes, there are going to be some polarised opinions about the way it looks. Fortunately though, this is a OnePlus phone, so you can customise an awful lot about that experience. Even with all the online drama about this new UI, I'm mostly fine with the out-of-the-box look, and I still appreciate features like Zen Mode for digital downtime, and other things like the many OnePlus gesture shortcuts. So, onto some smaller changes. Despite the redesigned camera module, the camera gubbins inside hasn't changed all that much compared to the OnePlus 8. The 8T's main sensor is still the 48 megapixel IMX586, which OnePlus has been using in a bunch of its phones since the OnePlus 7 Pro. It's a proven sensor and still takes great photos, but it is a step below the larger IMX689 from the OnePlus 8 Pro, which is still pitched as the flagship of the series, especially for photography. There's no telephoto lens, which limits your options somewhat for far shots but you do get a 16 megapixel ultrawide, the same sensor used in the OnePlus 8, but now with a wider 123 degree angle, which is great at capturing a wider field of view, but which does struggle in low light compared to the ultrawide of the 8 Pro. The front-facing 16 megapixel camera is also unchanged from the OnePlus 8. It's a competent performer overall, but unfortunately nightscape mode still isn't supported with that selfie camera. Finally, there's a 5 megapixel macro camera, which is fine, I guess. Macro photography isn't a huge priority for me personally, but at least this 5 megapixel macro is an improvement on the dismal 2 megapixel macro of the OnePlus Nord. Speaking of useless 2 megapixel sensors, there is also a 2 megapixel monochrome shooter. This doesn't take photos directly, but instead uses the colour data from the sensor to fill in the shades and monochrome shots taken with the primary sensor. To me, this seems largely pointless, and really just filling out the number of camera modules so OnePlus can boast of having a quad camera, I really don't get how monochrome and macro are somehow bigger priorities than telephoto for OnePlus. Nevertheless, the two cameras that you'll actually be using most of the time, the primary and the ultrawide, are decent. OnePlus has plenty of experience tuning the main camera hardware, and the resulting clarity, dynamic range, and speed of processing are appreciated. Meanwhile, on the software side, OnePlus has made some changes to its camera app, which now lets you enable nightscape mode automatically in darker conditions. Just a bit of extra added convenience there, so you're not constantly juggling camera modes. On the whole then, a competent camera system, but nothing really to write home about. So priced at $749 in the US, with 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, the OnePlus 8T hits that same sweet spot as the Galaxy S20 FE, but with a different set of priorities. Compared to Samsung, you'll miss out on a more comprehensive camera system and official water resistance, but OnePlus does offer higher specs and more premium materials, along with many differentiating software features of its own. Between the S20 FE and the Google Pixel 5, there's no question OnePlus has more competition for its T-model this year, but even in a world of more affordable Samsung and Google phones, the 8T is definitely worth a look if you're after a higher-end experience for less. That's it for now, if you're watching on launch day be sure to check out our Pixel 5 coverage also landing today, and subscribe so you don't miss our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.